The following is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. I often look at an oil spill after the event, and I'm particularly interested in how nature, which is uh, the world's best chemist, um, acts on all the variety of different compounds that make up oil. And um, I like to track and see um, how they change, uh, what happens, and that type of information will be useful perhaps in the next oil spill when they have to make more scientifically informed decisions about where to protect areas that could be the most impacted by oil or, or other types of triage decisions. One thing that happens is that nature has many different um, uh, tools in its uh, chemical toolbox that can act on oil. The most important uh, right now is evaporation and um, there are some molecules that make up oil that can evaporate into the atmosphere and that's a good thing. I mean obviously we don't like having any chemicals in the air but in this respect having them in the air is safer than the water. There are other processes. Sunlight can break down some of the compounds. Um, some of the compounds will dissolve in water and hopefully get washed away and diluted. Uh, microbes or bacteria are effective at eating oil but they're, they're a lot like teenagers. They work at their own pace. There's often what we call lag which means that they might take a little couple weeks before they start to eat, but they also will play a role in diminishing damages. Whistle Oceanographic Institution uh, was heavily involved in, in an oil spill that happened in 1969 in Buzzards Bay, a barge called the Florida spilled diesel fuel and uh, um, significantly impacted salt marsh areas. And there has been uh, four generations of scientists, starting off with Max Bloomer, Howie Sanders, and John Teal, who started all this research and has continued to go forth with now four generations of scientists studying how um, oil residues that, that remain still there today, a very, very small amount, uh, can still impact the salt marsh. And that's just one example, and it's an example that's driving some decisions about how to protect salt marshes. But that doesn't mean that every salt marsh that is oiled will have 40 years of uh, history. There are instances where I've studied uh, diesel fuel spills where you'd be hard pressed to find any diesel several months later. There are other diesel fuel spills where I have uh, found oil 40 years later. So you have to keep in mind that every spill uh, acts and behaves differently. We have to be careful about making any direct comparisons, whether it's the Exxon Valdez or the variety of oil spills that I worked on. Um, the key thing to keep in mind is that um, it has to do with location, has to do with time, has to do with the type of oil, has to do with climate. Um, all these factors play into a role that uh, makes uh, predicting what happens to an oil spill um, um, quite difficult. To learn more about Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.